All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Darcy Gentleman, and welcome to this news briefing from the 254th National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society here in Washington, D.C. We're joined today by Dr. Debesish Bandopadhyay from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Dr. Bandopadhyay will be take, talking to us about mining the seed husks of avocados for compounds that could be used in future medicines and consumer goods. Dr. Bandopadhyay? Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, gentleman. My name is Devashish Bandopadhyay and I am from the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley Edinburgh campus. And today I will tell you uh, something about our recent uh, findings. Next to me is Mr. Orlando Castillo, my student. Uh, actually, Valerie uh, Mericano, my another student, and Orlando Castillo, they played major role in this uh, project. Along with this, uh, Thomas Eubanks and Daniel Bigicana, they also helped us. So uh, what we, we want to tell you today uh, uh, that before I uh, tell uh, uh, that uh, stop, uh, let me uh, uh, express my sincere thanks to American Chemical Society for providing me the opportunity to present our findings. At the same time, I'm thankful to uh, Dr. Katie Cunningham, Dr. Uh, Douglas uh, Delmore, and Dr. Darcy Gentleman uh, for uh, inviting me here. So uh, what we did, uh, you know that uh, 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 avocado is uh, like a fruit and everyone like we we eat it here so after eating the avocado what we do this is the seed we just throw the seed to the trash can so this seed go to the trash can goes to the uh, trash can and this is our household waste the food companies uh, they dry up the seed and then after drying up they there is a like a little cell on the seed, the cell, the cell is removed and then oil is extracted, uh, you know, avocado oil. So this poor guy, this cell, this is waste of, industrial waste of household waste. This is household waste, this is industrial waste. So today I am going to tell you something about this poor man the story of this poor man, but trust me, it will not be a sad story, it will be a good story. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what we did, we collected a uh, sheet, and then from the seed we dried, uh, uh, in the absence of sunlight, of course, uh, with plenty of air, and then we collected the uh, husk, uh, 606 gram, and after collecting the husk, uh, we grinded and we did the fractionation, the nonpolar part, which is diethyl ether, we did. From there, we isolated some compounds al um, along with uh, oil and wax. About 32 uh, gram of wax we isolated, and tea, uh, three uh, teaspoonful of uh, oil we isolated uh, their form. Uh, after that, first we did the GCMS analysis, and the result of the GCMS analysis uh, is amazing. Uh, in a word, there is no other word which can fit here except amazing. So what we found there, and then after that, I, like we isolated some compounds also in pure form. So nonetheless, so what we found in our analysis, we identified a couple of compounds, uh, particularly from the oil, we have seen that 116 compounds are present, and in the wax, 16 compounds are present. So out of these 116 compounds, all are not identified, uh, but we have identified some compounds, and one of these is your, uh, uh, this, behenic alcohol. One of these is behenic alcohol. One of these is behenic alcohol, which is uh, your behenyl alcohol or uh, anti, uh, this is an antiviral drug and marketed uh, by a very famous uh, pharma company as the brand name is Abriva. Uh, so this uh, waste of waste, Abriva or Behenic alcohol has been isolated from here. Antiviral drug commercially available. And uh, so after that we found some other, other more com like important compounds 
which uh, like uh, uh, your lauric acid or dodecanoic acid uh, this actually increase our uh, high density lipoprotein or hdl and you know that as the amount of hdl is increased so the risk of atherosclerotic risk is de uh, decreased so this is uh, like uh, helpful yeah, and it has medicinally uh, like it, it is a medicinally privileged uh, molecule and uh, the, from wax portion we have isolated uh, benzyl butyl phthalate 68.36 percent of the wax contains benzyl butyl phthalate which is really amazing uh, lots of this guy we have found there and uh, this benzyl butyl phthalate is a very well known plasticizer and uh, for pvc polyphenyl chloride and it has a high mark like a very good market worldwide uh, like there is no plastic company you can find which uh, like they do not buy benzyl butyl phthalate and this stuff is present in the seed husk plenty and other than that we have isolated uh, your uh, benzyl uh, uh, di your bht uh, uh, your uh, hydroxytoluene, butylated hydroxytoluene, and uh, that is also antioxidant. Uh, there is a paper, the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry 2015, uh, they have reported this compound as antioxidant, and this compound has uh, application in food industry as food preservative uh, and food additive. So this type of important uh, compounds uh, that we have isolated so far uh, from the oil and from the wax section and still our work is continuing um, we are working on the other fractions of this uh, seed husk and we hope to see, uh, get more compounds that might show biological activity as well all right well thank you very much for that explanation of your research uh, at this time I'd like to see if there are any questions either here in Washington or from online and please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. So it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, it's really interesting, the, the compounds that you found in the, in the husk, but I'm wondering how commercially viable is this technology? How would you go about extracting these compounds at commercial scale? And um, would that be uh, worthwhile doing in terms of economics and environmental issues? It should be. Uh, the extraction is not very difficult. Uh, so, uh, uh, but the question is that how uh, we can collect or companies can collect the seed husk. Uh, that is like a uh, um, like little bit more uh, the business side, not the chemistry side. But I think the way uh, we do the recycling, uh, for recycling we collect the cans, we collect the plastic bottles, uh, the similar way we can collect the seeds, uh, that, can, that, can be a, um, uh, that can be an idea. Uh, like I saw that in Walmart when we were entering there are like big trash box and people put their cans and people put their plastic bottles for recycling. So by that way uh, they can collect uh, the seed. Uh, and then from the seed, uh, the husk can be separated very easily. That is not a problem. And from the husk, the extraction is like traditional extraction. There is no like uh, difficult chemistry behind this. So would it be the same extraction procedure that you've used in the laboratory? Um, yeah. Would it just be scaled up? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dollamore, American Chemical Society. Um, doctor, I'm wondering, uh, w w do you have any theories about why the chemical composition of the husk is, is, is different from the seed and you're finding different um, chemicals within the husk that aren't within the seed that may be um, beneficial? Well, uh, to uh, directly hit uh, your question, uh, before that, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, that um, like my major focus is drug development, both synthetic and natural. But I have pas passion for green chemistry. And uh, green chemistry, environmental uh, protection stuff, so I like them. And uh, uh, my professional affiliation uh, with uh, many journals as associate editor, 
uh, EB member or reviewer, uh, I have to do like uh, almost regular basis. So uh, about two years back when I was reviewing a paper, uh, green chemistry related, environmental um, uh, pollution, environmental hazard, then I found that all over the world every year 1.6 billion tons uh, of food waste are there. And avocado, it is like uh, all over the world every year uh, 5 uh, million tons of avocado are produced. So there is a huge waste and this waste can be used your, uh, to convert them uh, important molecule. That means to extract important molecules from this trash, uh, we can easily extra extract the treasure. Now the question is that why uh, the different mo molecules are present in wax portion, oil portion, and interestingly, you know that in avocado, there is a very good anti-cancer agent, which is avocatin B. Avocatin B is present in the flesh portion. And uh, cancer research, uh, a journal cancer research, you know, cancer research published a paper two years back on, avocat on avocatin B. But we did not find avocatin B in our uh, husk portion. So uh, similarly, we find, like we found another important anti-cancer compound, heptacosin. But heptacosin is not present in the meat portion of the avocado. So this is like natural law that, uh, and we have no control on that, that uh, like our brain is protected by blood-brain barrier. Our eyes, cornea, uh, retina, they are protected by ocular brain, uh, blood barrier, OBB. And when we are in our mother's womb, uh, we are protected by placenta. So I believe, or I guess, uh, that actually seed is the ovary. And the husk, or uh, this is the protector. And lots of uh, pharmacologically important compound present. At the same time, the plasticizer that I am talking about, most of them are toxic. So uh, these toxic compounds, I believe, uh, they protect the inside uh, the, uh, of the seed uh, from outer infection. So that might be a uh, justification. So far, I can uh, think about that. Uh, quick question for Orlando Castillo. Um, Castillo, I'm sorry. Uh, I understand that in part this was a student-generated project, that there was a question uh, about why not look at the husk. Is that correct? Um, yes, there was. I wasn't there for the initial part of the project due to the fact that uh, I wasn't really interested in research at the moment. But from my understanding, yeah, that's how it played out. Actually, uh, he had some other goal in his life, uh, not research, but he took my lecture classes also and somehow he has become interested and uh, he has joined to our research. But now he is the key player. Yes. What concentrations of these compounds are you finding in the husk? Okay. Uh, the main uh, plasticizer, uh, benzyl uh, butyl phthalate, that is present 68.36 percent of the total has, total wax. So that is huge amount. But in terms of the actual quantities per husk and, and has, uh, like uh, like like husk, uh, we collected 606 gram, and the wax uh, is like almost 31.73 gram. So it is a good amount. And out of this 31.73 gram, 68.36 percent is your benzyl butyl phthalate, which is the plasticizer. Right. And the paper, uh, the press release mentions that you're actually modifying, you've taken some of those compounds and you're looking to modify them to produce medicines, it says, with fewer side effects. Can you expand on that? Which compounds have you, are you actually focusing on and how are you modifying them to make, to make better medicines? Yeah. So that is uh, actually uh, my major uh, focus, uh, your research focus, and that chemical modification of natural product. Uh, so by that, you know that 78% uh, anti-cancer drug commercially available, uh, they are either natural product or their origin is in nature. 75% your antibacterial drugs, they are either natural product or their origin are in nature. 
So, uh, like chemical modification of natural product targeted to the synthesis of pharmacologically important molecules is a uh, like uh, very you can say like emerging field of research. And we we uh, like in the past we did the uh, estradiol. You know, estradiol is a natural product, beta estradiol. And we did chemical modification of beta estradiol, and we increased the anti-cancer activity about sevenfold. So uh, that is our goal also. Uh, that the molecule which are already uh, already pharmacologically active we can increase their potency depending on the like uh, how they can uh, work with the molecular target i mean the proteins how the docking should go so depending on that our plan is to do chemical modification of this uh, less uh, potential compound and always the drug drug discovery research like there is no drug in the market which has zero side effect. So always your drug will be better if it can show higher potency at the same time less side effect. So that is our goal, major goal. All right. Another question here? Thank you. Uh, Bela Buslik, ACS uh, Communication. Um, when you look at an avocado, there, there's a, a considerable amount of peel. There are a lot more than, uh, than the husk. Have you looked at the peel itself? Yeah. What's, yeah. what's in the peel, uh, peel that's of value? Uh, just from the reactions the peel gives when, when you bruise it and so forth, it's got to be full of antioxidants of, of sorts. So, uh, have, uh, like, you have any information on that? Because well, the, the husk is, is, is a uh, nice thing, but that's really not an easy thing to collect. Yeah, so uh, uh, husk, it is really like not easy to collect. Actually, Thomas Eubank, uh, he took the responsibility to collect all the um, stuff. But commercially, uh, uh, the, the question can be solved. Uh, I'm a person from chemistry, not business. Nonetheless, uh, that we need to collect uh, the seeds. Uh, we need to uh, like uh, like the way we collect the cans, used cans. The way we collect the bottles, plastic bottle. Similar way, uh, I think uh, it can be collected, and maybe business people can keep some better idea on that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Are there any other questions here from online? All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, the archive version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS live underscore DC. That's capital A, capital C, capital S, capital L, uh, lowercase IVE underscore capital D, capital C. Please join us for our next press conference, which will be tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., that's on Tuesday, on sopping up sunblock from oceans to save coral reefs. Thank you very much. <laughs>